Hey, what's going on everyone? Vig here for Serpent X Tech and we are looking at the Nerd Axe today. This is a marriage of stuff that's been covered on this channel before. The Nerd Miner, which is a LilyGo T-Display S3 and I showed you how to program that as well as the Bit Axe, uh, both of which you can find off of the Decentral website and I will have linked in the description. And this is a custom PCB with the BM1366 chip on it featuring Nerdaxe version 1.02. Different revisions have come out as the team has been building and developing. It does require a five volt, four amp barrel plug, 5.5 millimeter, which I do have the right barrel, but I don't have the right power. I only have five volt, two amps via the power brick connected to the USB type C, and we need four amps. So I need to make an adjustment there, and this is a custom printed um, 3d printed you know stand for the nerd axe but you can see all the various components down here or in the back side of this particular nerd axe as well as the holes for mounting the cooler just to keep this bm 1366 chip nice and cool there's the fan model if you need to know what it is uh, and in order to get the lily go uh, T display S3 connected, you can see the pins at the very top here. And those pins um, are what comes in this package. If we look here, I got the pins and the display pulled out. So we need to connect these two together via the instructions provided. And they also include links or advise you where to go for the assembly process. Now you got two options here. You can either order it fully assembled and already loaded and all you got to do is scan the QR code connect the Wi-Fi and set up your Bitcoin mining address and uh, all that good stuff or you could get the expansion kit with the 5 volt 4 amp adapter it's up to you I will have it linked down in the description and you just make the best decision for you but right now let's go ahead and get these pins plugged in and that display plugged in as well to plug in the pins correctly I'm using the long side to go into the Nerdax main board and then the short side or the short pins to connect the LilyGo display. All right, and now we want to mount the display onto those pins and you will see the pin out at the very top here. So you just wanna be very careful and get the device or the T display on there. I would recommend two hands in this process. Oh, we got a dead line right there. E. That sucks. But either way, it will do the job we needed to. No idea if this is gonna work, but let's see what happens. Fan powers up. The nerd axe is upside down, so that's great. <laughs> but that is the way I believe it's supposed to be displayed. Let me try flipping it and putting the type C connection on the other side. Honestly, I think the display is incorrect only because I had pre-programmed it with the NerdMiner software prior to, um, you know, Mining Disrupt, because this was the last one that wasn't given away. And so that might be why it's upside down. If I keep it the same way I had it, but program it with the NerdX firmware, I bet you the rotation would be correct, because this doesn't look right. The type C is supposed to be on this side. Yeah, if you have the pins, if you have the LCD the other way around, the pins are not connected correctly and then it won't even power on. So this is the correct layout, but we need to connect the type C now to it and program it with the Nerdax firmware, not the NerdMiner firmware, which we can use the website linked in the description in order to easily do that. All right, now we have the type C connection plugged in. We are not connected via power anymore. And we went to flasher.bitronics.store. And what we wanna do is we wanna select the appropriate device, Nerdax, and we'll automatically go to that firmware. But if you did NerdMiner, you'll see it down here at the bottom anyways, but just choose Nerdax, select the firmware. In case there's multiple, you wanna hit flash a new window will pop up, select your device, hit connect, and the start flashing process will begin. It will go through that process. As we can see, the screen is now black. 
while it continues to flash this particular device. It's going through the process. It gives us percentages over here on the right hand side. We're around 45% complete and just about done. Now at 99.9% .9 complete, the bar is almost full. Your screen will light up here shortly. There we go. Test result DS4432U not detected. Interesting. Is that the power? Flashing complete. All right, let's go check out the guide provided by Decentral. As you can see right now, there's a different nerd miner on the top here. This is one of the cases that I had, or one of the nerd miners that I've been having, uh, you know, running for a while. It's actually the one I got from Jingle Mining. And the reason I switched to this one is because this one was throwing an error. It seems that the pinout at the very bottom there just i don't know what was going on but it just wasn't detecting the chip u10 on the back side of the pcb and giving a unusual error even though the chip was completely soldered and available for the bit x to use additionally you see how the power cable is it seems that this power supply that i use consistently for the bit x maybe the connector or barrel plug is getting worn out so i'm probably going to order a new one just so I can have my BitX and the NerdX up and running. So next steps is we got to connect to that Wi-Fi. So you see the SSID there? You can use your phone or computer, but we just essentially need to connect to uh, this device and configure it with all the information, right? Our SSID or our normal Wi-Fi, as well as the Bitcoin and Bitcoin addresses. So let's go ahead and do that now. Utilizing my phone, we're going to connect to the nerd axe on the network and we just need to find that SSID before we do. Here on the Decentral website, you can see there's different kits that you can do. You got the expansion kit, the full kit. Full kit's going to increase the price on you, but if you have the nerd miner already and you just need the nerd axe uh, PCB to plug in your nerd miner, uh, you could certainly do that. They got orange stands and black stands uh, that are 3D printable. Uh, but also, if you look online through the GitHub, you can also 3D print your own stand and then choose a power supply. Now, if you choose a power supply for whatever region you're in, uh, you know, that will obviously increase the price. You could also look on Amazon, but always do what's best for you, even though it's still cool to support communities that support us like this central. So let's go ahead and drop our Wi-Fi down and try to connect to it. We got to go find it. There it is. Nerdax. We're connecting to it right now. Once we connect to it, we're going to need to open up the web browser and access it. It's taking a minute, so just be patient. All right, connected without internet. So I believe if we tap and hold on it, we can hit the question mark or the cog wheel. It depends on your phone. View more. All right, so there's the address right there. We can go ahead and go to that IP address. It's probably going to be 192.168.4.1 is what we can need to connect to. That's how I usually do it. So let's go check that out right now. We'll go back to our browser, go to a different tab, and type in the IP address. There we go. We're connected to the miner right now. This is the web GUI or the Axe OS. Let's go to settings, and there we need to update everything, including the pool that we want to mine to. Now, you could leave it on the public pool.io. Um, a lot of people mine to that pool. We'll probably go ahead and do that, but I might want to put it on the same pool that my Nerdax is on. So let me go ahead and update the SSID first. Update your server, your stratum port, and your wallet address. In this case, we're just going to use CK pool for now. I love the doctor, really cool guy. And as you saw, uh, the bit axe normally automatically flips the screen. So you got a couple options right down here where you can invert fan polarity, automatic fan control, flip screen. The screen's automatically flip. When we were on the Nerd Miner or using a Nerd Miner firmware, you saw it was upside down. So it's automatically doing it. I'm not going to play with frequency or anything just yet. I'm just going to leave everything alone and update the password to what I want it to be. Uh, some of you will know what that means and we should be good to go to save. And we also want to update our miner, but I'm going to do that from the computer. It's awesome because AxOS has all that here where we could update the firmware, update the website. We just need the www.bin for the website 
and then uh, ES minor bin for the for right now we're just going to save and I'll be able to manage all of this uh, once my network adds this device, uh, to instead of using the one one six eight dot four one we'll be able to just directly manage it so save it's talking to the device let's take a look and now we're just waiting for this screen to update you eventually it'll eventually get there once it uh restarts which we might have to manually do there's one more thing after the save that we need to do is restart the device we could do that with the same browser you just saw it's a little bit further down and then this screen will change just like that and now we can see the voltage the amps the watts the chip name which is the bm1366 the ip address and i'm pretty sure these buttons on the left hand side which will be right here on your nerd miner uh, does change some things around and we're getting around 940 giga hash Ooh, my bit axe is only doing around 520 giga hash nice one watt 11 watts per tera hash very nice very nice so what did we learn with this well the nerd axe is going to ship to you with just this purple pcb and the bm 1366 on it um, at least with the expansion kit, you're going to need the Nerd Miner, right? And the Nerd Miner, the LilyGo uh, T Display S3, you can purchase for cheap on Amazon or from uh, Decentral. And then you can combine the two and 3D print your own chassis for it to stand on and combine the best of both worlds. Look at that 1352 or um, 1352 Giga Hash. Heck yeah. Real quick interruption. Once the miner has ran for an extended period of time, you can see right now we're around an hour, 20 minutes. It does drop the giga hash or the hash rate down. So the 1.3 tera hash we were getting earlier is not indicative of its actual performance. I'm sure with some fine tuning via the Axe OS, we could get a little extra hash rate and get closer to that 500 giga hash uh, mark. But we are in a hot house in a warm state here in Florida, USA. So. We're getting close to around what the advertised hash rate is, but um, unfortunately not the over one tera hash we saw earlier. That'd be nice if it did. We have the golden sample, but that's not always the case. So we primarily learned that not all nerd miners, especially because they're so cheap, these ESP32 miners might not always work. And I believe that was the culprit. I'm also going to get another power supply so I can run my bid axe because right now I'm using my bid axe power supply. It does need to be 5 volt, 4 amps. So if you don't have that, don't try anything else because you might want damage some of the components. But we are up and running and hashing away. And uh, now we have this miner on the, uh, the solo pool or the CK solo pool. We have these miners on the same pool, the Apollo. Uh, BTC miner. This is the Apollo 1. I hope to get Apollo 2 to review for you in the future. I will have this bid axe back up and running here shortly once I get my other power supply from Amazon. And then we also have this nerd miner sitting here in the corner. And I'm about to get that old nerd miner that was giving us issues back up and running. So we'll have a number of different miners all accumulated together on CK solo pool. It might be better to use the public pool to be honest. Uh, for as low a hash rate that I have in total, but still gonna try my luck. We'll see how it goes These are lottery miners not a guarantee win of a Bitcoin block But still fun to tinker around with and play with plus you know what it actually looks cooler with this case Like that this one wouldn't have had a case, but this one's got a case and it does have an extension So if you do get one of these you want to put the long side of the pins into uh, the one you got off of Amazon the, the lily go case and, and uh, ESP32 miner and then put the short pins on the inside. Probably need to push that in a little bit more but I was playing around with it and the hash rate has dropped down to about 850 giga hash. Very interesting, very fun. I'm going to have fun playing around and tinkering with this thing but that's going to do it for today's video so do me a favor on the way out. Make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to get subscribed and hit notification bell to stay up to date as well as check out some of the links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here like links to Decentral will help support this channel. And by supporting our colleagues and partners, you support us and we greatly appreciate you. And yeah, you all just have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you next one. Stupid ass Lily Go Miner. You broke. You broke as sh.